Yesterday I went to Best Buy and picked up two copies of uh, Fallout New Vegas. I got for ten bucks a pop, which is pretty good considering this game still retails for about forty bucks, um, or tw cheap as twenty bucks at GameStop. But um, got one for me, got one for Clay for a late birthday present. And I love things that come in like just brand new factory sealed wrap. Um, just yeah, I'm, 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 I love it. Although I don't get this. Do not sell before 10 19 10. Now this game has been out for, well, that's the, that's the release date. And it's now, uh, I'm getting a text. Oh, a few of them actually. It's now, yeah, July of 2011. I don't think that you need that on the case anymore, people. I really don't think that you need that on, I, I guess Bethesda's in charge of that, I don't know. Um, that's the company who made the game, for those of you who don't know. I don't think that you really need to print that on the, car, on the case anymore, because I know the Best Buy I sold out of this game since its release date, so why is it still on there? Makes no sense to me whatsoever. Um, I, I'll get back to my text in just a second. But, um, yeah, I've got two copies of that. I might finish it eventually someday. Those of you who know about that game, it's a long-ass game. But um, it got me thinking about a game I used to play um, back in the 90s. It was on NES. It was called Bible Adventures. I'll link a video to it somewhere around here. You can click the red box or I'll put a link in the description to it. And you can um, go watch a little bit of gameplay to it, about four or five minutes long. And um, it had Noah's Ark, um, Baby Moses. I'm going to sit down for a second. I had Noah's Ark, Baby, Baby Moses, and um, David and Goliath. And David and Goliath, the video that I watched, didn't have David fighting Goliath or anything like that. It just looked kind of bland, really. And um, baby Moses, baby Moses, you have to try to transport baby Moses around the level and keep, you know, keep stay alive, basically. And then uh, you had a uh, Noah's Ark, and Noah's Ark, you basically had to go try to get the animals and try to get them into the ark. And um, you, you know, you could drop the animals, you, you could carry the animals three at a time somehow. And uh, it was, I, I remember playing that game. It was. Uh, apparently, I mainly played Noah's Ark because that's the only thing I remembered about the game before, before I looked it up. And it was pretty fun when I played it. Um, it was hard to start from yawning. <sighs> Excuse me. It was hard to, uh, and, and I, 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 probably, I probably gonna watch this video again. I, I will watch this video again at some point. So that yawn, then I will yawn. So, um, yeah. But, um, yeah, I just like the Noah's Ark uh, level. Uh, it's difficult because you, I think you think that you could get anything from um, birds to monkeys to ponies to I, I can't remember all the animals. They have like this list of like ten different animals that you can get because obviously they can't fit the entire every species in the world into one um, into one game. That'd be a long well they probably could nowadays, but that'd be a long game. Um, you know, you want this checklist of ten different animals that, that you have to go collect. You have to get like a male and female of every of every kind and. Um, it was fun. It was challenging. You can tell by watching the gameplay. It was challenging, but it was fun. It, it, it was a fun kind of challenge. But um, I don't know if there's any. Bob, I don't know if there have been any more Bible games released since that one. Uh, I'm pretty sure that there has somewhere. But um, and I, I don't mean like little children's Bible games. I'm talking about like you know like actual games like on like consoles like Nintendo or in it stuff like that. But. I figured that was something interesting to share, and um, I'm, I'm gonna end this video. I don't want to end this video too long. I'm already at, yeah, I'm already at about four minutes, I'm getting uh, getting close to it anyway. I'm gonna uh, end this video with a clip, a clip I shot yesterday when I was out riding around. So um, yeah, watch that and enjoy. I know people, you know, most people go to church. I don't, but you no, know, most people go to church. This is the Bible Belt, but. There's a such thing as overkill. I mean, just get a load of this. I'm going to show you how many churches are in this area. I'm passing by one church right now. I'm going to do all this in one shot. No editing, just so you can see how many churches are in the general vicinity. Now, church number one. This is kind of difficult to do in drive, so kind of bear with me. And my dirty windshield, sorry, but yeah. Uh, there's church number two. I'm pretty sure you can see that. Yeah, church number two. Pan over, church number three. And yes, I'm looking at where I'm driving. You're just pointing to the side. Uh, let's see, what's this? Church number four. And just in case that was not enough for you, church number five, right there. You can kind of see the steeple on it. If you can't see the steeple on it, well, there's a church sign. Five churches within, what was that, less than a quarter of a mile? Maybe several hundred feet, a couple, a couple hundred yards? Kind of crazy. And there's another church up here that I'm not going to wait that long for, but yeah. 
kind of crazy. A little bit of overkill there. 